teacher with summers off, you'd think I'd actually be brewing more over the summer. But as it turns out, I usually end up brewing a lot less. So this week, I'm actually gonna try to squeeze in a couple brew days. I'm gonna start with a Kvike Pale Ale. Well, guess I better get started. Let's get brewing. Someone's at the back door, hold on. Let's see. Peter, you wanna come out? Well, come on. Smash beer stands for single malt and single hop. So the single malt that I'm gonna be using is just over 11 pounds of La Monta from Mecca Grade Estate Malts. I had came out here this morning with every intention to make a smash beer. I failed to weigh my grains out last night. So I'm weighing my grains out and I kind of had this sneaking suspicion that I might not have enough. Turns out I have almost exactly a pound shy of my original recipe. So I've got a choice now. I can A, either brew it like this and just end up with a lower alcohol beer or B, find another base malt and add that to my pale malt. I don't want a 4% beer, so unfortunately this is no longer gonna be a smash beer because I'm going to add another malt. And the malt that I'm gonna add is Golden Promise. I have just about a pound of that left and that's gonna bump me up, so it's no longer a smash beer. Surprise! Mash is in. I'm just going to let this one sit for an hour. Uh, I have to go run an errand. It's going to take me about an hour, so I'll be back in an hour. Probably give it a quick stir, take a gravity reading, see where I'm at, and uh, we'll go from there. Ran my errand, came back, gave it a stir, took a refractometer reading. My pre-boil gravity is supposed to be a 1044. It looks like it's a 1042. I'm good with that. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this bag and get it boiling. So I am gonna stick with a single hop on this one. I am going with cashmere. I've never personally used cashmere in a beer before, so I have no idea what it tastes like. Things to look for in Brew Father and on your brew day. The cashmere that I have has a 6.9% alpha acid, but in Brew Father, the cashmere that I had selected had like an 8.4% alpha acid. So that would change it. If I just went with the measurements that I had originally put in there at that 8.4% alpha acid, I would have ended up having less IBUs. So good thing I checked. I did go back into Brew Father and I adjusted it to get the same exact IBUs as I had before just means I have to add a little bit more for the bittering hot addition and for my kind of mid-boil addition. So just check your alpha acids either before you do the brew father or on brew day like I did uh, and adjust it as necessary. While I'm talking about hops, let me go over when, how much I'm gonna add and what my additions, what my hop additions are gonna be for this one. We are going to be adding one ounce at 60 minutes, three quarters of an ounce at 20 minutes. At five minutes, I'm gonna add another ounce. I am gonna do a flame out addition of half an ounce, and then I am planning on dry hopping this with another two ounces. About day three of fermentation, we'll see how fast fermentation goes to see what we actually end up doing. I'm gonna ferment this at 95, so the good thing is, is I don't really need to cool it down too much. I am gonna try something new, the hop drop trick with the magnets so that I don't have to open up my fermenter at all to do my dry hop addition. So we'll see how everything goes. So that was a little stressful. I don't know if you guys could tell, uh, but when I put the hop bag in, I sanitized my hot bag. I put the magnets, the stir plate magnets, inside of the bag. So as soon as I stuck them to the side, all the hops were heavier. They flipped over and went down to the bottom, which was the opening. I tied a 
decent knot in the top. I'm thinking that'll stay and the hops aren't actually gonna fall into the beer, but they were totally touching the top of the wart. I'm sure they're gonna get some wart on them. I don't know, I am gonna ferment this one under pressure because I'd like to carbonate it as I ferment it uh, and hopefully just keep all those hop aromas in there. I'm, I'm hoping they don't end up in the beer. Anyway, it, even if they do, even if it does open up and they get in there, they're only gonna be in there. This beer is gonna ferment out, I'm, I'm guessing in three days at 95 degrees. So we'll see how it goes. If they do end up falling in there, I have a backup filter on the all rounders dip tube. So I'm not worried about hot matter getting in there. I was just kind of hoping I could drop the temperature a little bit after it was done fermenting for at least like a day and let the hops kind of sit at a lower temperature rather than 95. We'll see how it goes. Hat, can you see my hat ring? Good thing I had this hat on because I'm like dripping, dripping in sweat. I'm gonna need an outfit change after this. It's really warm in here and it's just now 10 o'clock. Really hoping this one comes out good. Um, it feels like, I don't know, feels like a couple things didn't go as planned there. Maybe I should have planned them out a little bit more, but. Only time will tell. And good thing is this one is not gonna take a lot of time. I'm guessing I'm gonna have this one drinkable in five days. You heard it here first, five days. It's gonna be drinkable. Hey, guess what? What? My beer's fermenting. Awesome. <laughs> I had to do an outfit change due to perspiration, but it is still the same day. In fact, it's just shy of six hours short, and I, I could tell right away, like almost within an hour, I kind of thought I saw some activity, but it's at 95 degrees. Let me just show you what it looks like here. Nice Krausen, got about 10 PSI in there. Looking good. All right, it is Wednesday night. I brewed this beer Tuesday morning, so we're talking like 36 hours later, fermentation looks like it's almost done. So you know it's Wednesday night when the hoppy hour is on. If you haven't already checked out the hoppy hour, it is a great midweek break if you love beer and you wanna just hang out and be chill. Anyway, it's Wednesday night, 36 hours after I pitch ye pitched yeast and fermentation looks like it's almost done. So I'm gonna take a hydrometer sample. All right, I'm legitimately super impressed. 36 hours. Looks like it got down to 1010. I tasted the sample, didn't get any off flavors. I think it's time to pull my magnets and drop my dry hops in. I'm also going to lower the temperature in my chamber to s probably 75 degrees uh, and then let it sit for a couple days there with the dry hops. And then it's probably gonna be time to cold crash, package, drink. Alexa, turn on garage lights. It's early Friday morning. The only reason I'm up this early is because I'm actually going to be taking the boys on a little road trip today. We're going down to see an Angels game. I wanted to check on this beer and I wanted to show you guys the progress because after three days, this beer has totally started to clear up. I honestly feel that if I was not going down to the Angels game today that I could totally rack this beer over to a keg and be drinking it by this evening. Instead, we're going on a road trip. done. Kvaik Pale Ale. Before I taste this thing, I've got to be 100% completely honest. Five days? Five days. It's not the fifth day. Sunday was the fifth day. Sunday was the fifth day. Monday was the sixth day. Tuesday, Wednesday, today's Thursday. Today is the ninth day. So I, this is, the tasting is at nine days. It was ready in five. 
I did take a sample of it. I know what it tasted like then. We'll see if it tastes any different. Was this beer ready on the fifth day? Yes, it was in a keg and it was ready to go. And I should have done the tasting that day. It was Sunday, so we, the boys and I had our little trip down to Anaheim to go watch. We actually caught two Angels games. Uh, but we got back and on Sunday, I racked it over to a keg and there was something we had to do that afternoon. And I was planning on tasting it either before we went over there, but I started to feel a little strange. <laughs> Let's just say, I wasn't really in the mood for beer on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, or really even yesterday, which was Wednesday. Today's now Thursday, and I finally feel well enough to actually sit down and do a proper tasting. So, the beer was ready on Sunday. I did pull a sample, and so I know what it tasted like, I know it was ready, it still kind of feels like maybe, I mean, you can tell there's really not much head on there. It was kind of the same way. Uh, it might, it, it maybe still is a little bit undercarbonated. I see bubbles, but as you can see that head, I mean, this has been out here for maybe like three minutes and it's already dissipated. So the head retention leaves a little bit be, to be desired. It was actually just as hazy on the fifth day as it is today. I actually think it's probably almost better that it's hazy because it looks kind of like a hazy IPA, but <laughs> it's supposed to be a pale ale, so. What do I get on the aromas on this beer? I've had this Kvike, the Voss Kvike dry yeast before. I've had it before. I did a hazy IPA with it and I did that beer really quick. That beer was done in like six days. And I get that, that kind of orangey smell that the Voss Kvike kicks off. It definitely has like an orange citrus smell to it. So I don't get much in the way of a malt aroma from it. There is like a slight like maybe spice or something that's going on in there. And then obviously I just took a sip. I taste that orange taste and I'm almost positive that that is going to be that Voss Kvike flavor that it's kicking off. Uh, so that's a, like a yeast characteristic that orange flavor. I did use a single hop with all cashmere. And so the cashmere, what the flavor I get from the cashmere is almost like, it, it's another citrus flavor, but almost, but more on like the, like almost on the lemony side. There's like a lemony herbal characteristic in there, which is actually really good. It looks like a hazy IPA, but it doesn't taste like juicy like a hazy IPA. It does stick more along the lines of like pale ale in flavor. The goal for this one was to get this ready, really, I was trying to get this ready as quickly as I could. I have gotten a Kvike IPA ready in six days. This one was technically ready in five days, and I really, honestly, I know I said it before, I could have kegged it on that third day. Now, I don't know what it would taste like, I don't know if it would taste the same way as it's tasting now, but the difference between tasting it at day five and tasting it today at day nine there's really no difference. It's a, it's a drinkable beer. It came out at a 5.4%, which is pretty much like right in the ballpark of what I was shooting for. It is still gonna be easier to drink on these hot, hot summer days. I get a nice little malt characteristic on the back end, but it's not like, you know, I don't get too much malt characteristic. I was thinking I would have, honestly, I was thinking I would have a little bit more because I used the Mecha grade, uh, but it's nice. It's a nice, drinkable, mellow, not too hoppy. And when I say it's got that orange Kvike characteristic, it's really not too overpowering. It's not like orange juice in the juicy way that uh, hazy IPAs have it. It's a lot less intrusive and just more mellow, which I think that's kind of the idea behind a pale ale. Just a good all around all around beer and i think that's kind of what pale ales are supposed to be it's just like a good all around like balance between a little bit of malt a little bit of hop and then this one adds a little bit of that juicy characteristic from the kvike which it's not really bad at all i do i am really enjoying this now i do hope that it does clear up a little bit because to me, a pale ale should be clear. I, I, I am curious to see if this one is gonna clear up with time. 
But I'm gonna say, as far as like the pale ales that I've made, this is one of one of the better ones. Cashmere seems to be a really nice blend between like kind of a citrus fruity, more on the lemony lime side. Act. I get that in the aroma too, now that I say it. Maybe that's just a mental thing, I don't know. I, I think this one's gonna go quick. I think this one's go, gonna go quick. Thanks for watching. Until the next time. Cheers. That was cheesy. Definitely don't wink at the camera. That was super cheesy.